Hey folks, it's me, it's your host, Cheryl Arkison, freshly unshowered. That's a whole story. <laughs> it's me, Cheryl Arkison, your host on the Quilters Playcation Adventure Sew Along um, 2024 edition, which is all about the rainbow, if you couldn't tell, um, with what's going on there. Um, the unshowered comment. <laughs> Hi, Connie. Nice to see you coming in from Oakland. Um, don't know if you've heard, but Calgary's having a bit of an issue. I think I mentioned it last week. It's gotten worse. <laughs> we are under major water restrictions. They're desperately asking people to conserve water um, because we've had a massive water main break. And the initial one is fixed. Yay! All good except they found five more <laughs> and they have to fix all of that before they can turn the water back on to a significant portion of the city. Um, and we're waiting for two of those fixes to come from California, speaking <laughs> uh, of Connie, but from San Diego. Uh, so yeah, so they're asking us to conserve water. So we are limiting our laundry to only the necessaries showering uh, every couple of days or every second day, uh, not washing the dishes all the time, paying attention to how I cook. I have gotten, I'm channeling my Baba. So uh, for those of you who haven't been following along, my Baba, the lovely old Ukrainian woman that she was, she was always old to me, but she wasn't always old. <laughs> um, hardcore, like, you know, uh, not pioneer because she, she wasn't, but she was a homesteader, um, for sure, an Eastern European. So uh, things that I have been done, been doing, that my husband's laughed at, is the other day when I cooked pasta, I saved the water, and I used that the next morning to water the little bit of the garden. And uh, my baba would have actually turned that into, like, soup. <laughs> probably um, that fastidious about it but it did remind me of something that she used to do and she I don't know if anybody else's grandparents or parents did this um, but a slop bucket she didn't have pigs no livestock just the garden um, but she didn't trust the indoor plumbing that my dad put in for her in the 80s so she did not have indoor plumbing until the 80s and she didn't really trust it. She accepted the bathroom part, but she didn't trust the kitchen part. So she still used the big pump to get it out of the well. And then she kept a, a bin in her sink. And uh, at the end of the day, when she did the dishes and there was water in that bin, she then put that in a bucket. The bucket also contained all the vegetable peelings, all the compostable kind of stuff. And then every night that would just get emptied into um, a pile in the garden if there was a lot of scraps in it or actually watering stuff um, in there. I haven't gotten to that yet, but I did set up the kiddie pool at the end of the eaves troughs to capture the water that we've had. We've had rain off and on for the last three days so that when it warms up this weekend, I can actually water the garden because now that it's gotten some rain, stuff is growing and it would be nice to have that. Thankfully, very lucky. Um, that's the biggest inconvenience we've got. So it, it really is only that an inconvenience for us in this community. Um, so we're doing what we can. So the whole city and the surrounding communities, communities that rely on our water as well, um, can have water because that's what you do. You look out for other people. Anyways, let's get to sewing because that is the least of my concerns this week. I can deal with not having a shower every day. Our hot water tank is also not working. So it's super fun. <laughs> Maybe I'd be in a better mood if I had that stuff. Who knows? But what else? We're there. Busy with the kids, end of school, chronic illness, 18 year olds, graduations, all that fun stuff. It's all good. Someone's leaving the country in a couple of days. Let's sew because sewing <sighs> calms down the nervous system. Hanging out with people calms down the nervous system. So you are all doing that for me and hopefully I am able to do that for you. So let's get to today's block. Um, we are on one of the blocks that has no background 
in it and it was a little sketch I didn't don't have the sketchbook down here um, it was a little sketch that I came up with a couple weeks ago wanted to experiment and play with it so I made one this morning during a break between things um, and I've just realized I forgot to turn off my notifications. They haven't gone on yet, but I'm sorry because they probably will. Um, there we go. Kind of fun. We're doing some layered curves a few times throughout the block. We are going to be adding some angles to things and we're going to start big and get small. So when I made this, the small pieces came from the scrap bin. I didn't cut anything um, for them, but you do have to cut some pretty big pieces for this first section. We're making it kind of big to small. You do have to cut some big pieces and you're left with um, the leftovers. <laughs> Kenza says sewing, yes, calms her down, hanging out with other people, not always. Fair point. I, I think I know where you're going on that. And um, yeah, fair point. Um, yeah, I get it. Um, so let's get to it. I haven't actually cut my fabric for the other block because I was, uh, um, but that's okay because I actually want to discuss what we need. So we'll just talk and do that all at the same time. So let's bring you over here flip you around say hello to the ladies oh terry right hanging out with the dog is always good very very true i've had some good dog walks um lately because especially good dogs walks it helps if you can choose who to hang out with also very very true um yeah i've had good dog walks because because of the water stuff my daughter the athlete the high level athlete she has had to actually go out of town not really like not leaving town but we have to drive out of the city to go to a community that does have water where the pools are open um which means some early mornings that we've been having that i'm not 100 percent thrilled about doing but you know we do what we can um but it's forced me to have some you know good walks with the dog so it's been not so bad okay so we need to cut out two squares for uh i'm just getting rid of this strip because it's just going to be in the way so it can go in the scrap bin we need to cut out two squares for our first round this is the only part we really have to do some thinking um you want to take the size of whatever your block is so in my case these get squared up to ten and a half inches right and whenever we're working with curves i always say to add an inch to what you cut your sort of raw fabric from um, we're going to have three curves in this block so i want to cut my first two squares big enough to account for that so that i don't have kind of weird edges it'll make more sense once we start making it <laughs> um it doesn't have to be super precise and exact um but you want to give yourself kind of that extra three inches to get there so if i want 10 and a half that means i want a 13 and a half inch square roughly i don't have a ruler that big so i'm just kind of eyeballing it this is a 12 and a half inch ruler and I'm just going a little bit beyond it. It's improv work, um, so it's not going to be super exact, but we just need to have the right idea. And again, if you cut it and it's not big enough, that's all right. Um, it's totally all right. You can just add to things. Um, but I think this will give you more than enough wiggle room for finishing the block when all is said and done but it will get progressively smaller as we go so oops sorry so for the next one i'm just going to cut use that square that i cut as my template for what i need to cut for the next one right and i'll fold all the fabric afterwards trust me i do after each time fold the fabric because it bugs me when it's not <laughs> um that's me though not everybody is the same i get it 
just making sure that's relatively smooth and I'm not even going to use a ruler. I am going to pull this out a little bit because it's all bunched there, right? Okay. And then across. Remember, we are doing improv. It doesn't have to be super precise until we really want it to be super precise. I'm just cutting off the salvage so it doesn't accidentally get included. All right. So let me give these just a tiny quick press. Just because there's some creases in there, but it doesn't have to be super flat. Just get out the creases. Okay. That was the first step. Two big pieces. Like always when we do curves, we're going to be left with the positive and negative. And I did experiment um, with different sizes here, but I found that actually starting with these both being the same size is worthwhile. And I'm not going to cut the rest of the squares out of the other fabrics until I need each one. Um, and the reason for that is that it's going to be a design decision as I go, how big each one goes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that quarter circle. So I have my fabrics laid right sides up, both of them. I'll cut through both fabrics with a nice sort of quarter circle curve, freehand cut, just like that. Um, I want my pink on the outside and my orange on the inside there because I'm going to go from one color of one end of the rainbow in. You could mix that up if you want to, um, but that's what I'm doing. So there, now I need to sew this together. You may remember we like to have that background piece on the bottom or the concave curve, and then that convex curve on top. I'm going to go to the machine we don't have seam allowance included with this cut, so that's why I come in just a little bit, you know, almost a half an inch here. That's also why we need to cut these bigger that we're gonna need because everything's gonna come in smaller because you don't have the seam allowances there. And I'm only gonna worry about sewing an inch at a time. Don't worry, I'll move you over to the machine here so you can see what that looks like. I'm just gonna get it in the machine and started with the needle down. There we go. And we'll go, yeah, you can see that. So again, I'm only kind of worried about an inch in front of the needle at any one point, just guiding the fabric through as I go. Keep a consistent seam allowance. Actually, we're doing quite a bit there. That's all good. That's why we cut extra, right? We see what I'm saying is I've got, you know, a good inch hanging over there. But we're doing good. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to press this. Now, let's see, curves like this will tell you which way they want to be pressed, and then sometimes you have to force them. This one's fairly happy going out, so I'm going to do that. I just got it in position with my fingers, and then I'm going to go with, let's see, got quite a bit of fold over. So that happens. I'm just going to troubleshoot with you for a second here. You see that? When I pressed it, it kind of went like this and folded in. It didn't want to press all the way out. That happens sometimes. It's actually not that big of a deal. Um, if it really wants to do that, those are times when you just accept it and you have that extra fold in there. I know Gwen Marston was a big fan of those too. Um, 
because rather than fight with the fabric, just go with it. And depending on how you quilt that, you won't even notice it. You just have to be careful when it comes to quilting that you don't flip it up as you stitch. But it worked. Sorry, that's all really wet because I um, spilled when I was filling my iron before we started. Okay, so there's the first section. Now I need to cut my next square. My next square is going to be an angle. So really what I need is I don't need to cut the whole square. I can cut a triangle. I don't have to do that whole bit. Or you can cut a square and then cut a triangle out of it. Maybe you have a scrap already. But what I want to do is kind of see if I were to cut a square, how big would that square be? Right, this will just help me kind of guide what size triangle. So I'm saying like if I do 10 and a half or 11, I actually get quite a good amount um, with it. So that's what I'll do is, oops, I was about to cut it out of green. Yellow's next to my rainbow. I'm gonna get my yellow fabric out unfold it a little bit so here's what I was saying is I can take this and I could cut a square out of this I said sort of 10 and a half 11 so I could cut a square you know let's say about like that cut that out and then cut the angle or I can just cut that angle this ruler won't be big enough but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make a little mark at about that 11 point. So I have a little mark up here and a little mark down here. And then I can use my ruler to connect the dots, essentially, to give me that cut. I do want to use a ruler here. I know with improv we do a lot of freehand cutting. Um, but because this is all bias, I am going to cut with that ruler to, just to give me a nice sort of straight moment um, it actually isn't necessary to cut off the salvage in this case because it will get cut off as well but I do find it useful to cut it off so that we don't make a mistake and include it in our sort of visual of things so my goal is now to stitch this on here we're going to do this kind of like that stitch and flip triangle sort of idea except it really doesn't matter whether I cut or cover the bottom here a little bit so I'm just going to kind of eyeball where it is now and then flip it over and that's it and now I'm going to go and I'm going to sew down this I'll actually do it this way because my brain earlier this morning did not do it the right way and I had to redo it <laughs> so I'm going to sew down this way so that I can flip that over there and then we'll be halfway done. So just to show you what it looks like sewing it. We will trim off the rest of this orange. So you might ask, well, Cheryl, when I did that first curve, couldn't I have done it with a triangle too? You could have, absolutely. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more stable if you did it with the square so it's not a do or die kind of scenario so if you wanted to do it with just the triangle you could but i prefer to have it with the hold on a second i'll move this way um i prefer to do it where that second one is the square that i'm attaching this to because if it's just a triangle that i cut this curve out of then i'm going to have the curve that's biased this that's biased it's just going to contribute to a more challenging piecing when we're trying to make the block not so wonky okay so we have that we want to press that but i'm going to go ahead and remove this triangle of fabric because we don't need it anymore right you want to remove every time you add because if you don't you're just you're going to end up with multiple layers of fabric there that are not going to be all that helpful for you 
all they're going to do is create bulk. Okay. So let's go over here. We'll give that a press. Right. We always want to press as we go. I'm going to press continually out. So towards this pink of my block. There we go. Now for the next one. So what we need to do now is add the next color. In my case, that's green. I want to have a green curve here. Well, I don't need a square as big as the yellow or the orange or the pink. I really only need a square that's going to cover this kind of bottom corner. So this is the point where you could look in your scraps, see if you have a piece that big, um, or just go ahead and cut from your fabric. I'm going to measure that so I can move this out of the way and not worry about cutting it while I'm cutting my green. So in this case, you know, I can do, if I cut a five and a half inch square, roughly, again, not really going to measure. Um, obviously, I won't be going straight to the corner here. It'll kind of go like that. So I could cut that curve out of the green itself and then recut it there. Either way, I'm getting that scrap. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the square and then it leaves what's on my bolt here. Um, just a little bit more easier to use, right? Because I don't have curves and edges and stuff there. Just, you know, it's all a matter of preference. There's no right or wrong. I can give you tips and tricks and show you the main process, but you're gonna do it your way and that's cool. That's totally cool. Okay. So like before, we're going to layer those right sides up. Obviously, it's a much smaller cut than there, but I'm going to maximize how much I can get out of this green, right? If I'd cut an even bigger square and cut up like that, would have worked too. But I think that's pretty cool there. Happy with that. So same thing. We're going to sew with our convex on the bottom or concave on the bottom and convex on top. Coming in again, just a little bit, maybe a half an inch to cut that seam allowance difference and sew it without pinning. So let me get it in the machine and I'll move you over again. Only worrying about one inch at a time. So this is a smaller piece, so I might have to lift the presser foot a few times to adjust things. Right, because I really don't want to be pulling on these fabrics. I just want to be guiding them through. There we go. Okay, press that and then we're ready for the next one. So you can see they're getting smaller. They are getting smaller as we go. When I initially sketched the block, they were much larger, but when it came time to sew, didn't quite come out that way. Okay, so remember I said sometimes I like to just pay attention to where the curve wants to go. This one wants to go this way. So go towards the green versus out towards the edge. And I'm not going to fight it because it doesn't matter for one <laughs> in this case. And uh, this means the block will lay flatter if I go with where it wants to be. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add another angle. If I'd been organized and just taking a quick glance through my scraps, but oh, look at that. I do have one. I wasn't sure if I'd had a scrap big enough, but it's actually a curve <laughs> left over from something, which I don't want, but I can turn that into an angle, right? So you can do that a couple of ways. I can layer them 
and cut just like we were doing before that layered angle this way the angle will be exactly the same um, or I could take this off and give myself a triangle and do that stitch and flip idea I'm gonna go ahead with the first one and just layer them right sides up give myself an angle to cut right so we remove that and that's where my blue is going to go on there so a few more scraps and then i'm going to go ahead and sew this angle and then we just have the last one to do so it's another one of those start stop kind of blocks but that's okay right that's totally okay so we'll cut that and I will I'll go back to the out part just in case there's some overlap here Okay, that worked great. Now we just have to do that final one. A little bit of purple. Sorry, folks. I ignored that. It was my husband. He knows I'm doing this, and yet he calls me. Always does that. So let's see what I have for purple. Just looking in the scrap bin quickly. I don't know. I don't know if they'll be big enough or maybe they're too big. So I have this, which is actually the curve in the other direction, um, which kind of could be fun too. Actually, it could be really fun. Why don't we go with it? Right. Instead of, cause I could use this piece and just cut the curve the other direction, but you know, why not? This is where it came to me. So why not try it this way? So I'm going to layer it, right? So that when I make this cut, we still obviously see some of the blue um, in there. But not too much. Okay. So there's that bit of blue that I cut off. So it's really going to end up only being just a sliver of blue, which will be kind of fun. A little bit different. So like before, even though this is the smaller piece, I still like having the concave on the bottom and the convex on top. So I'm going to flip that over. It doesn't really matter what the rest of the block over here is doing. I'm only worried about this seam. So I'm going to go ahead, take this to the machine. Get that in there. And go through. Same technique as before. Lining up as I go. Just as necessary, but I'm doing pretty good here. Try not to pull on things and stretch them out. Okay. Let's press that and then finish up the block because it really does kind of look like a mess at this point, right? When we don't have it trimmed, um, this one, it's going to be the case where it wants to go towards the purple just because that's the way it wants to go. Okay, give the whole block a good press. It's just kind of a little bit jumbly here. I'm going to use my good old flatter pressing spray. Give that a nice press. Remember, steam is also your friend here. And then we've got to go ahead and trim this down. So we'll check to see. And this looks a lot bigger than 10 and a half inches. Um, but it means I have some choices on how I square it up, right? 
So 10 and a half inches, if I maximize my purple here, I'm only gonna have a little bit of pink and you actually have quite a bit of the orange color. You could change that curve, right? I did kind of a very sharp first curve, but you could make that a little more gradual. I can also move where I put the ruler and have a little bit less purple and a little bit more pink. So 10 and a half, a, I like to keep my finger here on this corner so I can play it. I mean, obviously I wanna have some here but I don't know if I need all that much. I'm gonna kinda cut the difference and go right there, okay? So hold my ruler in place, thumb and pinky off the ruler, holding it in place. I'm right-handed, so it's my left hand holding. If you're left-handed, you're gonna line up on this corner and have your right hand holding, but I like to hold that in place with the ruler and go up and then across. And I really actually kind of like how that ended up being, right, there's a little bit of pink left here, but none up here. It's gonna create, create really kind of a dynamic finished block. So now that I have that fresh cut, I move again because I'm right-handed to having that in the bottom left corner. If you were left-handed, you would move it over here and have your lined up and hold it down to make your cut. Cognizant that not everybody is the same. Okay, hold that in place. And make that cut. So, you know, we did end up trimming off a fair amount of the pink, but you can't know that necessarily right because we don't know what the other curves are going to do you can see there's very little green trimmed off so if i had changed sort of those angles it would have ended up differently so i'd rather have more and trim stuff off and put this in the scrap bin than not have enough and have to add if that makes sense so there is our block for this week week 24 of the quilters placation adventure so along say goodbye to the ladies for this week say hello to me again <laughs> uh, i'm gonna put the block up on the wall you can't see the bottom of the rainbow stuff but you can see that there right just playing around with shape and proportion a little bit. I actually think this one, this might be a block that I play with at some other point, maybe not in this, um, but it has some potential for some interesting um, designs if the block is in repeat. So maybe I just play with it in apps and, and see what happens when you can kind of put it in and twist things around and stuff, but have fun playing with your blocks. Week 24. This is this is almost halfway. Some this weekend we will pass halfway for the adventure so along. Not quite halfway in the year, but we know we're only doing 49 blocks. So we're about halfway um, in this. I have a crazy week ahead. Um, Quilt Canada actually starts in Edmonton. I think there's some classes today, but officially um, tomorrow or Thursday it starts. So if you're going to be in Edmonton, I will be there on Saturday. Uh, that's the earliest I can go. So say hello um, if you find me. If you're going to be there and you're free, come meet up with us. I'm hosting a meetup um, with some giveaways on Saturday morning. Um, info is in my Instagram feed. You can see it. there's a photo of me doing this. And uh, yeah, get the details there. We'd love to see you if you're in town. Uh, and, and we'll have a good time uh, in all of that. And I got a kid leaving the country this weekend for a trip. And the kid, the girls are doing final exams this week. My son has really not been well. It's just so much. And then 
the business side of things for our family business is kind of a little intense. Plus the Oilers are still in the playoffs. Didn't look like they were going to be, but they still are. So good luck to them tonight. Um, that'll actually be relaxing for me to sit um, with fake beer and I'll watch the game when all is said and done. So thank you, everybody. Remember, use the hashtags. Thank you, Kenza. Getting some uh, words of encouragement from uh, Painter Mom and Kenza and a few others. Um, really appreciate that. But remember, you can use the hashtags Quilters Playcation, um, Quilters Playcation, or sorry, QP Adventure Sew Along and QP Adventure Sew Along 2024. Make sure you're posting if you're making stuff, sharing it in there. You can share these videos on Instagram. You can check them out on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube because then you will see, get the notifications for when new videos come up because I'm not super consistent in <laughs> putting them up there. Um, but we're, we're going to do it. Uh, Water Lily, I'm sorry you're not coming. This is my first time in many, many years that I have been to Quilt Canada. Um, it's just not generally on my radar much anymore because um, it's always at a really, this is not a good time for mothers um, with children still in the house. It's frankly what it comes down to. Quilt show would be lovely, but it's really just not a good time of year for mothers with children in the house. But that's all we'll say about that. <laughs> so, um, let me rephrase it. Parents with children in the house, because, um, it's not always the mothers that are the quilters. So, uh, rephrase that to be parents in the house. That's it for me, your host, Cheryl Arkison. Another week down, week 24, 24 of the Quilters Playcation Adventure So Along. So glad you are here with me. I feel better at the end of this. Um, I really do. So thank you for sewing with me. Thank you for joining me. And we will catch you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.